What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to be talking about El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. Written and directed by Vince Gilligan, the mind behind Breaking Bad, this film stars people like Aaron Paul, Matt Jones, Charles Baker, Jesse Plemons, Robert Forrester, and more. And before we get too far into this video, for anybody unfamiliar, I just recently did a review here on the channel for Breaking Bad, a series that I had watched years ago, shortly after it actually completed on AMC all those years ago. And it was a show over the course of the last decade that I had intended on revisiting at some point. And once I started this channel, I definitely knew it was one of those dramas that I definitely wanted to be able to talk about here on the channel. I had a lot of fun going back and revisiting the show. And a big reason I wanted to revisit it was also because I wanted to watch this film for the very first time. And you may be wondering, well, why didn't you get around to this when it came out in 2019 if you were a fan of the show? And the honest answer is that around the time that this movie had come out was around the time my now wife and I had just moved in together for the very first time. So when I saw this was coming out, we thought this was the perfect opportunity for us to, you know, watch Breaking Bad for her first time, my second time, and then we'd walk our way through this movie or make our way through this movie. Um, only for that to not have happened for years. And it was just one of those movies that was just sitting on a shelf in my mind of movies I wanted to watch and so I finally got around to it now that we've completed all of Breaking Bad I didn't necessarily have to wait but it was just something that I was like oh yeah we'll watch all the Breaking Bad again and then I'll watch the movie and I just never did but I'm happy to say that I finally have and after, after having seen it just in the first like 20 30 minutes my brain was immediately in a place of like oh, i can't believe i'm just now saying this because for anybody unfamiliar i am going to be talking open spoilers but this is an epilogue to the breaking bad series that ends on a pretty somber note there is a great sense of finality to things but there's also a sense of open-endedness where you wonder where a lot of these characters went what ended up happening to some of the characters but most notably the character of jesse pinkman played by aaron paul and if you checked out my review for breaking bad you know that i thought that he was such a great part of that show i mean both him and walter white played by brian cranston but you have these two characters that start in one place and are are completely different places by the time the show is over and in the case of jesse pinkman you have this character who's just you know so cocky and just kind of doing things for money and just wants to you know be crude and smoke and drink and just be a party animal at the beginning of the show only for him to become this really broken character by the time you get to the end and he's on the run and so while that show does have a sense of finality that he got away from everything everything with Walter Wright and all that danger, it doesn't necessarily seem like it'd be a smooth life afterwards. And that's where El Camino picks up, which really intrigued me. I was very curious to see what this movie was going to be all about. And what I could say about this is that it doesn't have your typical three act movie structure. In a lot of ways, it feels like an episode or two, maybe an episode or three that are kind of crammed together to make a feature length film in the kind of styles of storytelling that Breaking Bad was, if that makes sense. It doesn't feel like it has the exact same kind of structure you would see typically from a feature length film, but I think it does a good job of continuing on the story of Jesse Pinkman and Breaking Bad and allowing us to get, you know, a little bit more finality specifically on the one of the two lead characters that really does kind of get left open ended at the end of the show. And right out of the gate, Aaron Paul was so great to see in this movie again as Jesse Pinkman. It was just so great to see him playing this character and this came out quite a few years after the end of Breaking Bad and he still looks great still looks pretty much exactly how he did at the very end of the show obviously it hadn't been that many years and the dude is a celebrity so he's able to maintain himself but he didn't really age all that much where it felt like one of those sequels that came way too far into the future where now there's a continuity error when it comes down to him I thought for the most part that he looked really really solid in the role once again and everybody else for the most part who returns into this movie that were part of Breaking Bad all look the role still they're able to kind of slip their ways back into those characters and two characters in particular that were reintroduced to at the very beginning of this movie that I hadn't really spoken about in the Breaking Bad review that I did just because there were so many side characters that I didn't have all the time in the world to talk on are, are the characters of Badger and Skinny Pete played by Matt Jones and Charles Baker. They are two characters that are pretty pivotal in Jesse Pinkman's story in Breaking Bad in terms of them being side characters that he relies on and works alongside. They do make a lot of appearances over the course of the show. Yeah, they were two characters I didn't necessarily want to leave out of that last review I did, but again, that review was almost 30 minutes as it was and I had to cut out a couple of notes that I had in terms of certain characters that, you know, are big parts of the show, but 
aren't maybe necessarily highlights that I wanted to speak on, but they are two characters I did enjoy seeing over the course of Breaking Bad. And so to see them at the very beginning of this show and kind of see them trying to help Jesse get back on his feet and pretty much being willing to do anything to kind of help him, you know, get away from the cops and, you know, get some money into his pockets and get, get out of town, you know, I thought was really cool because you have these two characters that in a lot of ways seem irresponsible, seem really sketchy when you watch them over the course of Breaking Bad. And in a lot of ways they are, but I thought that that camaraderie that the three of them all have, especially after all of the events that have happened in Breaking Bad, really made for a really emotional start to this movie as we find Jesse in a really scared and broken place trying to do whatever he can to try to get away from danger, try to get away from the police, and most notably get out of town, get out of this area that he's in in New Mexico. And so I thought it created a really interesting start to this movie and instantly had me like excited to see where the rest of this movie was going to go. With all that said though, what I can say is that similar to Breaking Bad, Vince Gilligan's writing, his tension, his heavy, like kind of exposition building tension scenes are all present here. Everything that Breaking Bad is known for, the things you want in that storytelling, the visual style, that gritty tone, everything is present here. And you can tell that Vince Gilligan had a lot of passion to tell this story. With that said though, I was a little bit torn with the, how this film was paced out as we continue to go because I think there's an element about Breaking Bad that works in the nature that it is this serialized storyline that you're following over the course of seasons. Those episodes that are slower, those moments that are slower, that are character driven, really are able to be kind of built upon simply because you have so many more episodes to go and by the time you see the entire work, a season at a time, you know, a set of episodes at a time or an entire show, you you have a storyline that's really able to have been built upon and let those small moments breathe. Whereas in the case of a feature length film, you gotta use that time a little bit more. Of course, this film has the advantage of having a lot of that storytelling having been done in the show. So you can kind of, you know, turn a blind eye to certain things that maybe would have been a negative in a regular movie. But in the case of this movie, there were a couple of moments I did find to be a little bit too slow. And there were sections of the movie that I struggled with a little bit in terms of continuity. And where that comes down to in particular is the character of Todd, once again played by Jesse Plemons. You may remember I mentioned in my review for Breaking Bad that Todd is a character that appears in the later part of the show and he's part of a group of individuals who both Walter White and Jesse Pinkman find themselves working alongside in Breaking Bad. And all this eventually ends up leading to Jesse Pinkman eventually being captive to these individuals, including Todd, where he's making meth for them and uh, he's held literally in a cage. So in order to add context and give some new kind of perspective to jesse if it were the events that take place in this movie they add in a bunch of stuff in the past that are meant to be flashbacks so that jesse knows of places that he can go to in this film in particular he's looking for money he's looking for some money so he can kind of stash away some cash and get out of town in particular he's looking for an individual played by robert forrester known as ed who was actually the one who was able to get walter white out of town and was you know kind of well known in the shady world for being somebody who can make you disappear and so they bring his character back and jesse pinkman is trying to build up some cash so he can go to robert forrester's character he can pay him so he can disappear but in order for him to get such a large amount of cash we end up getting these flashbacks throughout the course of the movie that show us back to when he was in captivity before the end of breaking bad where jesse plemons character todd is pretty much taking him out of this cage to go to his apartment and to go and do various little tasks for him him, kind of helping him on the side without anybody knowing and taking Jesse to his apartment is where Jesse ends up learning about where he keeps his money where he keeps all of this stuff hidden and this ends up bringing Jesse back to these places in present time after the events of Breaking Bad and so with that added context in order to kind of see where Jesse's going in the present day came some continuity errors for me or some things that just didn't feel like they flowed as well First of all, based on the events of Breaking Bad, it seemed fairly unlikely that Todd was just going to kind of be pulling Jesse out of this cage to go on these little side quests with him. It just seemed like something that this film needed in order to kind of expand upon the story and give Jesse the knowledge of where he can find a large amount of money. But also, and I hate to put it this way, Jesse Plemons, unlike Aaron Paul, had changed quite a bit physically between the release of this movie and when Breaking Bad ended. And what I mean in particular is that Jesse Plemons had put on quite a bit of weight and had aged up a little bit. He was substantially younger when he filmed that 
ending of Breaking Bad, but he was also a much thinner guy. And listen, I'm a chunkier guy right now. I'm currently at like the chunkiest I've been in quite some time. So by no means am I body shaming Jesse Plemons. Plus, I've heard him speak about those things quite a bit. And he slimmed down quite a bit recently. If you look at anything with him now, he, he looks like really good. The dude looks like he lost a lot of weight and he's taking care of himself, which is awesome to see. So with all that said, I just think more of it for me in my brain was a continuity thing because I watched this right after finishing Breaking Bad, pretty much the day after I finished re doing my rewatch. And you have Jesse Plemons as this really thin, much younger looking guy, whereas in this film, he's put on some weight and he clearly looks older. And so since the scenes that he's involved in are all flashback scenes, it all just kind of broke continuity for me a little bit. Not enough for me to say like I didn't like the film or anything like that, but it was very much a distraction. And adding in all these sequences, again, these side quests that he was going on with Jesse, it just didn't really seem like it fit in my mind when it came down to Breaking Bad. And it just felt like something that was added here simply for the sake of Jesse knowing where he can find a lump sum of money. And it just was a big gripe that consistently pulled me out of the movie throughout the course of it. With that said though, moving past that though, I do think that this film does really tug on the heartstrings when it comes down to the character of Jesse Pinkman in particular. I think that Aaron Paul once again does an incredible job showcasing this character who's matured and changed quite a bit and is really, in a lot of ways, in pain. You know, here he is in this place of just pure desperation. And there's still those moments here that might make you laugh. There are those Jesse-isms that are fun. Those things that Aaron Paul brings to the character that are part of what makes people fall in love with him. Even when he's a little shithead in the earlier parts of Breaking Bad. But I do think that this film does an incredible job of playing off of the end of the show. Where we are seeing him in a much darker, much more mature, and much more kind of in pain kind of place in his life. I think he captures that super well in his eyes and tons of little nuances in his performance. Especially in the facial acting. There's so much that he's able to kind of do, even with some body language throughout the course of the film, that really makes him feel like a real person. And a lot of that has to do with Vince Gilligan's tone, his directing, and, and just his writing in general. These actors are able to give such great performances, not only because they're elevating the material and obviously fully committing to the material, but also because of the fact that the writing feels natural, it feels real, and that was a big praise I had of Breaking Bad as well. Now, a big part of this movie as well, too, is Robert Forrester, of course, is a character of Ed, who I mentioned before, is a character I also didn't mention in the Breaking Bad review. Again, there was tons of characters to mention, and there was tons of other main, bigger characters that I was talking about in that review. But Robert Forrester's character, Ed, was an individual that Jesse Pinkman had the opportunity to get out of that life of crime with, like, early on in the show at a certain point, and he runs away from that opportunity. So Robert Forrester's character is not really thrilled at the notion of working with this guy again. He feels like he's shady business hey you had the chance to work with me before i'm not too sure that i necessarily want to work with you now so he kind of makes jesse go and find more money than he actually needed initially and so that adds more complications so i thought that was an interesting part of the film but with all that said when it comes down to the way that this movie ends and you know does it feel like this great resolution to jesse pinkman's character i'm a little torn on it i thought the, sh the movie was really good i was about to say show but I, I thought that the movie was really solid in a lot of ways and it really highlights what makes Breaking Bad great. But by the time we got to the end, we got the shootout at this warehouse with these guys, one of them being somebody who was involved with the captivity in particular to Jesse Pinkman in Breaking Bad. It just felt like there was all this added context and flashbacks that oftentimes kind of made me scratch my head when you have certain actors that don't necessarily look the same as they did when they filmed the show before. There was just a couple of elements about this that felt convenient or that they were just kind of shoehorned in to tell this story. And so in some ways, I thought this was a great epilogue to Breaking Bad. In a lot of ways, I also kind of felt like it was just okay. That's by no means for me to say that I thought the film as a whole was just okay. I think that when it comes down to practical effects, cinematography, musical score, throughout the, the writing the performances all that was so so well done that this was a solid watch and a solid epilogue to breaking bad i just don't necessarily think that the story as a whole rises to the same heights that breaking bad did and as a finale in a lot of ways if you finish breaking bad and go into this i don't think it has the same impact that the actual finale of breaking bad does have so it begs the question whether or not it was worth it to have with that said though it was nice to see these characters again here it was nice to continue on the story and it made me excited to go to the prequel show now and check out Better Call Saul. And the last thing I'll talk about here that's a big spoiler of this film is that at the very end, we get another flashback sequence between the characters of Walter White and Jesse Pinkman, where both Aaron Paul 
and Brian Cranston get to play their characters at a substantially younger phase in the show. One thing that was pretty noticeable in this scene, though, while it was awesome to see Brian Cranston as Walter White again, clearly he didn't shave his head for the sequence that they have together here, so he is clearly wearing a bald cap, and I thought it was incredibly noticeable that he was wearing a bald cap. You can just tell in his head that there was hair under the bald cap. It, it was incredibly noticeable, so it was kind of a little bit tough to take that sequence as serious as I did the rest of the show. And I thought it was little moments like that where it didn't feel like the continuity was as strong as it was in Breaking Bad. It took me out of it, but it was nice to see Brian Cranston in the role again. He's fantastic as Walter White. I just wish I wasn't as distracted by some of those continuity things that just stuck out to me so much because I had just finished watching Breaking Bad and went straight into this movie. I think if you watch Breaking Bad and then you watch this years down the line and you don't have it as fresh in your mind, you may be able to breeze past some of those things and not have it bother you as much, but it was something that kind of stood out to me a little bit more. With all that said, I'm not entirely sure when I will get around to Better Call Saul, but it is something that will be in my back pocket to do a video on at some point down the line. So big thanks to you guys for watching. Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed the video and comment your thoughts. How do you guys feel about El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie? Did you feel like it was the epilogue you always wanted? Did you feel like it kind of maybe undid a little bit of the ending? Did you find it to just be okay in some areas? and really great in others what were your thoughts maybe this was the perfect finale for you whatever the case may be leave any and all thoughts down below and i'll see you beautiful people in the next video Bye bye